In this video, I want to show you how to calculate the IRR using trial and error. So the IRR, which stands for internal rate of return, is the rate of return that would result in an NPV of zero for a project when it's used as the discount rate for that project. So let me show you what I mean by that with an example. Let's say we have a project with the following cash flows. In year zero, which is today, there's a cash outflow of $50,000. So to take on this project, we have to pay out $50,000 today, but then one year from today, we're going to have a cash inflow of $33,000, and then two years from today, we're going to have another cash inflow of $24,200. Okay, so we've got one cash outflow today, and then two cash inflows over the next two years. So how would we set this up to figure out the IRR? Well, remember, it's the rate of return that's going to give us an NPV of zero. So we set it up where we say, okay, here's our MPV of zero. We'll put that on the right-hand side, so this is zero. What would we have to do if we had a negative $50,000 cash outflow today? This doesn't need to be discounted. And then the $33,000 cash inflow, that needs to be discounted by one period. So we divide it by one plus R. Okay, so this is basically, we're just taking the cash flows and we're discounting them. Okay, obviously not the first one because it occurs today. And then the second cash flow occurs two periods from now, so it'd be 24,200 divided by one plus R raised to the second power, because it's two periods from now. If there was a third year, then we would have the third cash flow, and it'd be divided by one plus R to the third power, okay? And so these cash flows, the discounted cash flow, the net, the, the net discounted cash flows, when we take the negative one and then we've got the two positive ones, then we net it all together, should equal zero, okay? The question is, what is the R? What is the R that would make this equal to zero? How do we get the left-hand side here equal to zero? And so we can use trial and error. What we do is basically plug in different, different numbers for our R. So we can try, for example, 9%. So if we try 9%, we say, okay, let's just take the same thing here and let's just plug in 0 0.09 for our R. Okay, so we got negative 50,000 plus 33,000 divided by 1.09, okay, and then 24,200 divided by 1.09 to the second power. Again, that's because that's two periods in the future. So we're just using the time value of money to discount these cash flows, and it gives us an MPV. If it, so if we calculate this, these out, you get an MPV of $644. Now remember, we said the IRR is supposed to get, that when we plug in the M for R, it's supposed to give us an MPV of zero. But we don't have an MPV of zero, we have $644. So obviously, 9% is not correct. So that's, that's not our IRR. So let's try another one. Let's try 9.5%, and we'll just iteratively go and try different values. So again, we just plug in, this is just the same formula as here, but now for the R, we have 0 0.095. See that? So now it's 1.095 is what we're dividing the 33,000 by, and then the 24,200 we divide by 1.095 to the second power, or to the second power, and then what we get here. Here's the I've divided all this out for you. So, but it's just basically just doing division here. This equals this, and so forth. So that gives us an MPV of $320. Okay, so here we had an MPV of 644 when we tried 9% and then we went up to 9.5% and got an MPV that is still not zero. This this is obviously not zero, but it's closer to zero. Okay, we went from 644 to 320. So by going up from 9 to 9.5, we, we got closer to zero. So even though 9.5 is not correct, it's not the RRR, we're going in the right direction. Let's, so let's keep going up. Let's keep going up. Let's try now 10%. Okay, so now we're just going to plug in for this R. It's going to be we're going to plug in a 0.1. And so if we do that, now we've got negative 50,000 plus 33,000 divided by 1.1, and then plus 24,200 divided by 1.1 squared. Okay, to the second power. What does that equal? Okay, and that equals zero. So now that we've actually found a rate here that equals zero, now we know what our IRR is. Our IRR is 10% because when we discount these cash flows and net them together using a discount rate of 10%, that was where we got this 0 0.1, 
When we do that, we end up with an NPV for the project of zero. So 10% is this project's internal rate of return. Now, what do we do with that? Well, we're going to look at the company's hurdle rate. Okay, so let's say that the company has a hurdle rate where they said, look, we have to uh, achieve a return of at least 8% on our projects and so we compare them and say okay well this project has a uh, IRR 10% and our hurdle rate is 8% so we meet the required rate of return for this particular company so then we would accept the project okay if the hurdle rate was 13% then we would say well we get a 10% return here but we don't meet the hurdle rate we would reject the project um, and again we also if, if we do exceed the hurdle rate we want to make sure too that we don't have any kind of capital constraints and I'll make another video where, where we talk about uh, what to do you might have an IRR that exceeds the hurdle rate but you have some kind of capital constraints where the company only has so much money to invest in certain projects and we'll talk about that in another video